Hello, people of the internet. My name is JD Shadow. Before I go any further, I need to address one particular thing. I don't script any of these videos. I tend to speak from the heart because, quite frankly, the reason why I do that is because if I read from the script, you will be able to tell I am reading from the script because I don't do any kind of an emotion or anything like that. There's sometimes when I probably should read from a script because I might say something that I might regret later or I may miss a few details that I probably should have said or something I should have commented on and stuff like that. But for the most part, I know what I'm going to say, a generalized interpretation of what I'm going to say and then go from there. But I don't need any script to say what I want to say about this idiot that you're probably going to see on the screen right about now. This guy shares sort of the same name as I do, and I have to be quite honest, I am embarrassed to be needing to say this. This guy has a Twitter handle of JD from NY206. I have no idea why the from NY206 is there. I'm probably from New York, but I don't know what the 206 is all about probably where he lives in his apartment or whatever however you may know him as somebody who has a bit of a history somebody who has a lot of questionable things that he might want to answer for because it got exposed most recently he has a wrestling podcast known as off the script and from what we can tell he doesn't like wwe that much or many other things and i've seen this account from time to time being retweeted and it doesn't seem as though he has anything good to say about most of anything so I kind of ignore him but it kind of got exposed because a wrestler decided to respond to it now let's give some context before we get into the thing that was said about a couple years ago I made a video entitled how they can make Ronda Rousey heel and Alexa Bliss face and even though that didn't come to pass it seems as though Alexa Bliss has been become face with Nikki Cross as Bliss Cross Applesauce, which I have no idea where that name came from, but it sure as heck works. And it has gotten way over. As in, they were going to pull this thing where Alexa Bliss goes heel on Nikki Cross and all of this other stuff, but it got so over and the relationship got so over that they decided to just go with it and just make Bliss a baby face with Nikki Cross. It has been working. It's super over. So much so that it's also elevated the women's tag division. It has done wonders for it. However, not everybody seems to be siding with her as as per her ring ability she was pushed when she was still green and she got a lot of titles right away and that's something that the WWE has been known for recently they like to push the people who are way over as baby faces or heels right away before the fans are able to get behind them and stuff like that and that's a problem that a lot of wrestling companies seem to do anymore most notably TNA when a ex WWE star came in they immediately put the title on them Christian K being one of the major ones but many people who saw her in ability didn't really think that she was that good that she did not take bumps very well that she refused to take bumps now there's a reason behind that is that she has suffered from some concussions in her career so lately she probably is not allowed to do that and I would say that's a good thing because we don't want people to get severely injured in this sports entertainment realm but the TLDR of it is that she's got a lot of her critics but she's got a lot of her fans too is even those people who have some criticism about her own ring work have no problem with her ability on the mic or her personality outside the ring it is that of an angel people who have had nothing but good stories about meeting her in real life that she is a sweetheart and she has helped to elevate the divisions that she is in the women's tag division I have just said about that there's a lot of talent right now that is is benefiting from her Nikki Cross being a major part of what they have been able to do with that. So there is no doubt that people are fans of her personality and even if they critique some of her in-ring ability, which is no problem, they're allowed to do that. We are allowed to do that. Just look at a lot of the people who we criticize now, Roman Reigns and John Cena and stuff like that. There's no way you're going to get away from being criticized. If you're in a public spectrum, you're going to get criticized. However,
However, there is a line that you should not be crossing, which JD from NY206 seemingly did. Now, there is some debate about when this was actually taken. The clip you're about to watch might have been from a year ago, according to JD himself, but the person who exposed the clip said it was six weeks ago that this guy had said it. Now, I'm going to play for you ad verbatim the full clip, and I want you to really listen to what he's saying because it is very important when we get to how JD from NY206 actually responded to the controversy that ended up happening today. Here he is. Everybody's eye, right? And she does nothing. She does nothing. She's just, I guarantee you, she's one of those women that just lays there and just takes it. Nothing. She does nothing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in bed with Alexa Bliss, man, and she and she performs the same way she does in the ring? Awful. All look and no substance whatsoever. So we got Bliss man. Now, I want you to really pay attention to what he actually said. He said, imagine being in bed with Alexa Bliss, as in the actual person that he's talking about, Lexi Kaufman, the actual person that he is discussing in the sentence before that. Keep that in mind. Just stick a pin in it in your head because that's going to become extremely important. Because you may be wondering, why are we even talking about this? This is seemingly a nobody. Or you might be thinking, why are we talking about this podcast? There's like a billion and one podcast about wrestling out there. You can just change the channel and stuff like that. Well, let's first of all get to why we're even making this video. Because Alexa Bliss responded. She saw this particular tweet from this guy who, by the way, the person who exposed it is a parody account. This is not the real JD for NY206 that is giving you this clip. I woke up today to this tweet from Lexi Kaufman, who says, quote, Normally, I ignore his ignorance because all he wants is to be recognized by bashing me. But X freaking excuse me, sir? How dare you discredit my work in such a disgraceful way? Hashtag what a class act. And of course, she quotes the JD from NY's burner account right there showing the clip. Now, keep in mind that she's talking about the second part of this. Why do I say this? Because JD from NY206, once he saw this, responded. And that's when we get to where this all blows up. The Twitter account, JD from NY206, who has now renamed himself the IWC bully, bully in quotes, starts off really well by going on a crusade and getting his followers to do two things. One is to re Report gay D206, the person who posted the initial clip of him talking about Lex Bliss, the way he was the one saying, first of all, good morning, guys. I don't believe this so early in the morning. Our first course of action today, and I am going need your help on this one, is to actively report the Twitter account gay D206, an account dedicated to me to simply hate and slander me entirely. Second tweet after that, second course of action, report the account be the realist for to Twitter and see it get it's banned. Not sure if it's the same person as the last account, but this account has been spreading that I am a pedophile to several this morning. Absolutely effing ridiculous. Now, this account was the one of the others who initially called out JD for that particular clip, which he says was a year ago when I'm pretty sure that we're getting the truth from the people who are calling him out. But then the next tweet becomes the one where he actually sees Bliss respond to him. And here we go. Oh, the pattern. Big pro wrestler plays victim, claims bullying, and all the anti-bully H.A.W. proceed to bully who she tweeted about, but please pretend you're anti-bully. You and the show you're performing on is terrible TV. I do what I do for people to laugh and understand that. You are a woman of power and do nothing with it to make you the act or the division better. You're a selfish individual who doesn't care who succeeds around them but you and who you like. Instead of an IG selfie that will net 100k likes, 
be better at your profession. In closing, thanks to the shout out on Memorial Day, the fact you know who I am and what I do is thumbs up in my book. Maybe one day I'll say, guys, Alexa Bliss had a great match and is making a difference in the division being better. Until then, no wonder Sasha is better with a emoji, a wink emoji. But then this led to him responding to nearly anybody that he could see is flinging vitriol his way. And let's be very clear here, I'm not condoning the act of death threats or vitriol or anything like that towards any of the parties involved here. I do not want people to do that. I don't want people to be that idiotic because not only is that illegal and you shouldn't be doing that for moral reasons, for obvious reasons, but it gives them the opportunity to frame everybody in that light. And that's exactly what he's doing here. But I don't think I have to really defend Bliss's ability in the ring because a lot of people have already done that. Sonya Deville has already done that. Page has already done that. McFoley has already done that. And Braun Strowman has seemingly done that as well. But keep in mind that everybody who's defending JD here, which is not many, it's usually just his stands who are going to defend him no matter what he says. They're going to excuse anything he says or what have you. Notice that they're just talking about his opinion about her in-ring ability and not the other thing he said, which is the crux of why people or upset and rightfully so it is him saying imagine being in bed with her basically he slut shamed lexi kaufman he literally went on his podcast which is listened to by pretty much a good bit of people i would assume since he keeps at it no matter what he says and we'll get to the other stuff he said in a moment yeah that's where it gets really interesting and slut shamed her i don't know what else to put this now also keep in mind that i talk a lot about the outrage culture the cancel culture i'm against both of those things i'm against a lot of that kind of stuff you have no doubt seen my videos you have no doubt known exactly where i stand on that and i know for a fact that lexi kaufman is not an sjw she's far from it she got criticized for saying good things about the fabulous moolah tournament when that was a big deal when people got crazy and lost their minds because the fabulous moolah was named on a battle royal and everybody found out just how controversial of a human being she was. Now, I hold to my belief about that when I said something about that whole situation on one of my videos. I am not budging from that position. However, be that as it may, she got pretty much attacked for that by the authoritarian left. So she's not immune from that. She's far from us at SJW. So that reason goes way out the window there. And they're getting on Zona DeVille saying that I pray I run into this dude one day. When people would know, anybody with a brain could figure out that if JD were face to face with Alexa, he would never say this. He would never even hint at say anything like this. Not just to her, but to anybody. He would not have the guts to say anything about any of the wrestlers he is bashing to their face. No, threats are not okay, but I don't see this as a physical threat or anything like that. I see that as somebody who wants to tell him exactly what she thinks of him, and I do believe a lot of people would love to tell him what they think of him, and a lot of people have right now. But the thing about it is, is that he keeps going. Saying to Paige is not bullying Paige. I'm a bully for criticizing pro wrestling. If any of you did research, you all actually retweeted and quoted tweeted that was a mock of my name riddled with homophobic tendencies. No evidence of that. Yet none of you actually took the time of day to tweet about that. Alexa Bliss is official character on TV. I made a joke about her lack of input on a tag team match. You watch a 30 second clip by a troll account. If I am the problem, you are a cohort of the problem. If I said Alexis Kaufman, different story, fictional character. And there's that argument that, oh, okay, now he's talking about the character that is played on this TV show. But she is better known as her stage name on that show. All of a sudden, now that he's getting called out, he's backpedaling. He is doing the classic backpedaling. And he's doing the classic way that I've seen a certain person on the Twitch Security Council or the Safety Council 
or whatever the call on it is doing, which is never addressing the real reason people are upset. Remember the whole thing with Ferocious Ridley's stuff and people were trying to say, oh, they're worried about her being trans or something like that or self-identifying as a deer, when in reality, they're concerned that she is being extremely toxic and labeling all gamers as if she has any kind of proof to back up that claim, any scientific proof to back up that claim. She's laying a Kafka trap. And maybe JD from NY did the same thing here that he laid a Kafka trap right then and there. But I don't think he's really that smart to do that. Have you seen the tweets that I'm reading right now? It doesn't look like he has any handling of the English language here. And the subreddit Square Circle, who usually is very critical of her, are also on her side. There are a few, however, and this is where I wanted it to show you the actual quote that he said, who are actually saying that he was saying that she was like somebody who was in bed like like a limp fish or something like that I'm not sure what the terminology is there but in that particular clip he actually says within context there's really no other context you can show that would make this okay here that he actually said the name Alexa Bliss in bed that's what he said and by saying that he meant Lexi Kaufman how else can you interpret that I dare anybody who are fans of his or want to defend him and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people if they see this video they're going to jump on me like some people did last year when I called people out for change of channel stuff that's going to say that oh she's just a fictional character but keep in mind he is saying this about her in-ring ability out of kayfabe and yes I do know these terminologies I've watched wrestling all my life I know what's going on and part of what I know that's going on is that when this came out and he started to attack the person that originally called him out for the clip other things started to come out and this is where I gotta say this guy needs to be dealt with now because the things that he has said about other women in the wrestling industry and about other people is making me very very uneasy to see him continue on in the way that he is. Now there's the whole situation with somebody by the name of Ryan Satin and I'm not quite sure where this came about and I'm not going to pretend and I know the entire story behind what was going on but he got into a battle with him, he got into a full battle with him, and it had to do with a very serious topic with somebody who had committed suicide. And there have been a couple of them who committed suicide recently, one of them was Chad Gaspar of Crime Time back in 2008. They were a very good tag team actually. And there was another one, a person I going to be right through the coals that I don't remember the name now, but that was a big thing and I guess that's the one thing that Ryan Satin got into it with JD from NY about. Because one, he thinks this is a huge conspiracy theory against him, that everybody conspired against him and he won't just shut up. That's all he has to do, just say, hey, I apologize for saying the part about being in bed and to just shut up about it. That's all he has to do. And for some odd reason, people keep going saying, hey, we got to double down on not only what we said, but how we said it. He has every right to criticize her if she wants to. He might be wrong and we might disagree full throttle with him about his opinion of her. But he has every right to express that point. The problem here is what he said after that. What else he said, the quote unquote humor that he was trying to put on. It's not funny in the slightest. Yes, we understand that you think it's a joke. It's just not funny. It is slut shaming, period, end of story. And you can't say I'm a social justice warrior because have you seen my videos? I have talked against cancel culture. I have talked against all of that. I am pro LGBTQ+, but I am against authoritarianism. You cannot pin that on me because the evidence is right there. But the evidence is also there of what else he said about certain people in the wrestling industry and in the business and wrestlers in general. The very people who put their lives on the line to entertain us all. He has said some disparaging things about some of the women in WWE. Now, I believe he might have deleted those because I 
I saw him earlier today before I went to record him, and now I cannot now that I've gone to record this, because of course he has. And then, of course, the stuff about Braun Strowman and what he has said about him to where Braun responded. And I'm not going to read all of these because there was just a ton of these particular tweets that were coming out. He is getting no love, if any, just from his hardcore fan base that, again, is going to excuse him no matter what. But that hasn't stopped him from attacking other sites just for the notion of reporting this, just for the sake of even bringing it up. This is why I believe that once he sees this, yeah, they're going to come after me. Yeah, I know it's going to happen. Keep in mind, I'm not asking for anybody to go after him. No one said to go after him also didn't send any of her followers go after him they just called him out and he's calling it death threats and stuff like that now i don't doubt that there are some bad actors in that whole mix and we shouldn't condone that in any sort of way but there is a lesson to be had here and that is this jd guy is the one angry gamer of the wrestling world he is angry about everybody he is angry about everything and it is clear that he doesn't want to own up for his his mistakes and try to make excuses for him. Jokes? I don't think what you're saying are jokes since you keep making them and they are very, very uncomfortable to have to listen to. They are horrible in every sense of the word. There is no context in which makes questioning somebody's ability in bed into slut shame okay. There is nothing, no context whatsoever. There is no place for that. There is absolutely no place for stuff like that to exist. And the fact that he won't stay quiet about this and to let the controversy die and to relish in it gives me suspicion that perhaps Perhaps he's just an utter troll of a person who thinks he has a popular web show. And yes, I know there have been other places of which wrestlers have been bullied by people on the internet or have been called out before. There's a difference between being called out for bad behavior and stuff like that and absolute vitriolic bully. The stuff that happened with Sasha Banks and Bailey back in WrestleMania, I think it was 34, I think it was, that the laydown thing happened. That that was more calling it out for some childish behavior. That wasn't bullying. That was calling people out. There were some bad actors, of course. There's going to be anywhere you go. There's going to be bad actors. That doesn't mean the rest of the people have to be lumped in with that in order to try to keep you from having to answer these questions or having to answer for the actions that you have done. And yeah, maybe we should have called those out a little bit more. Maybe this stuff that JD has done has showed us that perhaps we could have been better at calling that stuff out as well. And that's a good thing that perhaps this is showing us maybe we were wrong in ignoring that as well. And some people have called out the actions against people like Brie Bella or Kelly Kelly, or those kinds of people who have tried as hard as they possibly can and got crapped upon for it, who have tried to improve. However, it seems as though GD from NY is never going to improve and he is just wanting the attention and the people who are defending them, please, please, please understand that it's not that he has an opinion about her in-ring ability. He is wrong on that opinion, but he's entitled to that opinion. What he's not entitled to is to slut shame her. What he's not entitled to is to get away with saying, oh, imagine being in bed with this person, being with the very person that I spoke about just a few seconds ago. How can you say it was anything but what he said? It is clear as day. And how can you say it was a freaking joke? I don't understand the defense here. There is no defense. All there is is this guy who screams like he's Cenk Uger, acts like he's one angry gamer, William Usher, and is going off about how everything is just so bad, yet he continues to watch it. And is going after anybody who even calls him out or even discusses that he even did anything like this. This is absolutely mesmerizing. And the worst part about it is, is that some high profile wrestling commentators on YouTube are still following him as of the posting of this video. So obviously he's got a following of some form of description, but he is an utter cockroach of a human being to keep doing this and to backpedal 
and to make excuses when he gets called out. But sunlight is the best disinfectant. In any other case, trolls should be deprived of their proverbial oxygen. Notice I said proverbial. If you don't give them attention, they soon go away. But this guy is one of those super trolls who keeps backing you into a corner until you have no choice but to respond. He is a master at this. He forces you to have to respond. But Lexa Bliss did so masterfully. And now everybody knows who this guy is. And now everybody knows who Lexi Kaufman is. Somebody who grew up in Columbus, Ohio, a native Buckeye. And somebody who grew up with mental illness herself. She had to battle anorexia at an early age and she defeated it. That in of itself is a testament to how brave and strong this woman is. Not only that, but she is known as one of the nicest people in the roster who has spoken up against bullying, who has spoken up for empowerment, who has gone out of her way to talk to fans, to be able to communicate with fans, and to show fans that they are appreciated, and to show that they are as strong as she has shown that she is herself. And we have seen countless stories about how good of a person she is outside of the ring, and how good of a competitor she is inside the ring as well. This is somebody who does not deserve this, who did not deserve this kind of attack. Again, civil discourse, constructive criticism plays a huge role here. And this is anything but constructive feedback about ability in the ring. Yes, everybody could do a whole lot better. We could have done a whole lot better in how we called out things like this, but we can only learn from the past and make this into a teachable moment. And anybody who sponsors this JD from NY26 person might want to rethink their sponsorship of him. Anybody who's following him may want to rethink their stance and to call this out. We need people like Wet Culture to call him out. We need people like Gorn and Raw to call him out. Like Brian Zane to call him out. Brian Zane is one of the people who is following him. Maybe he should rethink that. Maybe he should call him out himself. He's one of the people who has defended wrestlers, who has defended people from things like this. Maybe he should be the one that speaks out. Maybe he should be the high profile YouTuber that speaks out. Hopefully I would be the one that wakes people up, but that's just a pipe dream of mine to be bigger than what I am. Maybe. But this guy is just an utter cockroach of a troll and no one deserved this. This was not a joke. It was not funny. This was not taken out of context. This was not about anybody's ability to perform in the ring even though he's wrong on that as well. This is about slut shaming. This is about thinking that she is a slut. Talking out of school as if he knows what he's talking about which he obviously does not. He is truly one of the most negative people I have ever seen in the wrestling community and it would do us all to shine the spotlight on this so we can get it out of the wrestling community. We don't need people like this in the wrestling community. We need more positivity in the wrestling community. It is okay to criticize somebody. It is okay to use constructive feedback as long as it is constructive. It is not okay to do what he did. End of story. And for anybody to defend it, you are just as bad as he is. To try to defend it, to try to use some backwards way to defend it, is only making you just as bad as he is turning himself out to be. They are right, it is okay to criticize, it is not okay to be another cockroach about it. It's okay to not like things, but don't be a dick about it. My name is Shady Shadow, and that just happened. It's okay to not like things, it's okay, but don't be a dick about it, it's okay to not like things. Don't be a dick about the things you don't like. It's really as simple as that.